It is good to see you. I guess at this point I can say happy Thanksgiving. We are glad you guys are here. Amen. And we are looking forward to this time together today as we come together to worship our Lord and Savior and exalt His name and give Him all the praise because He is worthy and is due all the praise. Amen. Amen. As you guys were watching that video, we've shown that the last several weeks now as we are preparing ourselves for... Uh, this Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, for our families, loving families, uh, meeting at 8 a.m. to box and then deliver uh, meals to right now, we have 100 families that we're taking these to. So we are extremely excited about this day. I want you to know that if you've not had a chance to sign up for it or you, you're interested in still being a part of it, you can do that. Just show up. Come and be here by 8 o'clock. We will find a place for you. We will get you involved, and we look forward to having you here with us. So uh, speaking about all the praise, let's stand up together and let's give him all the praise because he is here, and he is meeting with us. Let's worship him together. Come on. We praise you, God, today. We thank you, Father, that we can praise you with all that we have. We love you, God. Move in us. Sing with us. From the rising of the sun to the ending of the day, one name alone be praised. Every nation, tribe, and Lifting up, lifting up now, come on. Your name alone 
Thank you, God, for your goodness for us. Sing with us.
praise you, God. We give you glory, God. You alone are worthy. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. Y'all may be seated. We are so grateful and excited to have y'all here with us and to have those of you that are watching online as well. And we welcome you today to LifePoint Church. We're grateful to have you here with us. As you came through the doors, uh, you picked up our worship guide, and we are going to share a couple quick announcements and then some other things that we're going to do as well. Uh, For those of you watching online, all of these are listed there for you also, and you'll find on our website this actual uh, worship guide that we're speaking of is also a PDF that's posted there for you. You can find that, open it up, and you can see all these announcements later on uh, once we're done with the service. But we encourage you to do that. Uh, For those of you that are in the room, we want to talk about a couple things that we would like for you to do. And as you came in and you've looked it over, there's a piece in that uh, worship guide that tears off. And we would ask you to take a few moments to tear that off, fill out the information that it requests on the front side and the back side. And you'll see that one side has an opportunity for you to share maybe a prayer request, a God story, something you want to connect with us on that we can partner with you to pray together, partner with you to, to just celebrate uh, what God's doing, or if there's a need, however we can serve you, uh, we want to be able to do that. So fill that out, and then um, it, at the conclusion of our service, we would ask you all to simply place them in these boxes that are around the, uh, the worship center. There are four in the room. You can find them pretty easily. For those of you online, uh, we would ask you to do the very same thing, too, with a couple twists and turns, though, because you got to you got to kind of surf through the web there on our website to find where it says connect with us. But once you find that, uh, you can connect with us there and share a prayer request. You can submit uh, any of those things. You can give online. All of those things are there uh, for you as well. So please check those things out. Um, So as we start into this time together, we want to share with you guys some upcoming announcements, some things that are happening. So as we already said, This Thursday is our Families Loving Families, so make sure that if you're signed up for that, that you're here ready to start at 8 o'clock, because that's when we're kicking it off. So don't be pulling in at 8 o'clock, be here ready to start, so that we can get uh, those meals out to those families and then get ourselves home as well. Um, But coming up December 19th, we also have a Christmas golf tournament that's going to happen, and that's an 8 o'clock shotgun start. For those of you that know golf, I don't know what that means. I mean, I know what it means when I'm hunting. Uh, but not so much for golf. I'm not a golfer. I'm a hunter. So uh, there you go. So, uh, so if I show up with my shotgun, is that okay? I don't know. Okay. So anyway, um, so please consider that, guys and ladies as well. Uh, we're going to have a great time together on the 19th, and it, it serves a great cause. So uh, check it out. It's in your worship guide. Secondly, we want you guys to be aware that our road to Bethlehem is just a couple weeks away, and uh, we're looking forward to this time as well. Uh, so 6 to 8.30, December 12th and 13th, we will have a live nativity, but it's a drive-through of eight different scenes that depict the Christmas story and tell it, in a, and tell it just as it, as it shows up in Scripture. And so, but uh, we've got over 100 folks already involved in the cast, and we're looking forward to coming together with you guys. Look for information from us in emails that we've sent out with some dates and important things that are happening over the next couple of weeks as we're preparing uh, for that. Uh, If you are involved and you haven't heard anything, then you need to contact me so that we make sure that you know and you've got the right information to be prepared for it, okay? But please share it. Invite your families. Invite your friends. It's on our Facebook page. It's on our website. You can go there and watch uh, all of that. Just direct them to, um, to this opportunity. Third, we want you to know that uh, December 6th, normally we do this outside, and so we've been trying to figure out a creative way that we could still do our Christmas under the stars in light of the virus and all the things that are happening there, so we've decided to move it indoors and create a starry night in here. So we want to encourage you to come, uh, wear your PJs, that's for the kids, and, uh, and then um, come ready for just a great movie. We've shown, actually shown this movie several, several years ago, uh, but it is a great uh, full-length feature. And uh, we'll have a great time together in this room that evening with a big blow-up screen that we've got, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So invite uh, folks to come and and be a part of that time. This last announcement, I'm going to invite Miss Wendy Moorfield Phillips. (laughs) Wendy Moorfield Phillips. Wow, I went way, way. 27 years. 27 years, yep. But I'm, I'm not married to him. You are, so I didn't remember that. So here we go. 
Well, that was quite an introduction. Good morning, Life Point ladies. I am Wendy Lynn Moorefield Phillips. <laughs> no, um, on behalf of the Ladies Power Lunch Committee and our precious pastor's wife, Miss Emily Pearson, we want to invite you all the ladies of Life Point to come join us for this really special December Christmas luncheon. It's going to be great. It's going to be special. It's going to be right here. And we are still looking for about maybe 10 more hostesses. So if you're interested in hosting a table by bringing your own china and silver, it's going to be a special opportunity um, for others to join us. Not only is it for LifePoint ladies and our guests, it's also for our community. So um, we have specifically invited many, many, I think, what, about 20 um, area pastors' wives. So we're going to honor them and invite them to join us. So it's for us, it's for our community, and it won't be the same if you aren't here. So that's December 12th. Please register today, today, today. And for the next couple of Sundays, um, we'll have someone out here in the foyer that is able to take your reservation. But um, if you're interested in being a hostess, email us at Power Lunch at lifepointchurch.me. Power Lunch at lifepointchurch.me. Go on the website, buy your tickets, or look for us in the foyer, but get your tickets now. Thank you. Sorry about that. I really threw you because you said December 12th, and it's December 8th. Pardon, pardon. December 8th. So come December. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> well, um, let's talk together now uh, about offering. And not necessarily a financial offering, a right, giving in that way, but that is part of it. But offering of ourselves uh, in this season. As we enter into the season, I mean, people become more and more open uh, to giving and more and more open to uh, helping others. For us, we understand that because that's part of our existence. As believers in Christ, it's what we do each and every day. We serve one another, and we find joy and we find purpose in doing that because that was Christ's example for us. He served, and so we serve. Um, but there are different ways that we have those opportunities to serve. One, yes, we give our offering, uh, and, and we're going to have a prayer right now to get, together, and uh, we've got these boxes that we've put up that you can drop your offering in, or you can give it online, or however. Um, but then we also have these boxes down front, and uh, y'all might be thinking, well, what are those boxes all about? So, um, so I'm going to let our friend, our very good friend, Tim us tell you guys what these boxes are for. Y'all watch this. Greetings from New Missions. I'm Tim Dutellis, and I want to thank LifePoint Church and Pastor JP for hosting the New Missions Shoebox Drive. During our Shoebox Drive at New Missions, we have the honor to welcome volunteers to our facility in Orlando to help pack the shoeboxes and cases, which are then loaded on 40-foot cargo containers and shipped to Haiti. They arrive at our warehouse facility, and then by vehicle, they're arriving at our schools at each campus where the pastor and the school director are able to put those shoeboxes in the hands of our students to go home with their families. So it's so critical this year as shoeboxes arrive for you to know that your gift matters to each child because each child matters to God. And we have witnessed how children bring these shoebox gifts back home to their families and they're a blessing to the entire home. So thank you again for modeling generosity and for helping to bless the lives of children and families in Haiti. I thank God for you. Amen. And we thank God for Tim and the work that he's doing there and the opportunities that we have to partner with New Missions. And so you may have done this before in the past, and you're like, oh, I've done it before. But you've got to remember, it's not the same child that's going to receive that box. And you've got an opportunity to make a difference in that child's life um, that nobody else will have that opportunity. And so I love these boxes because we can put absolutely anything we want in these, um, from pictures of your families to drawings from your kids and just different ways to connect and show them that, you know, they're not out there by themselves, that we love them and that we are praying for them and wishing great things for them. Um, you know, through new missions as well, you can sponsor a child, and many of us do that. Uh, you sponsor children, and um, that's another way of being able to give 
uh, and do that. So I want to encourage you, uh, in just a few moments, we're going to sing a song called Christ Be Magnified. And would you allow him to be magnified in your life by coming and in an act of obedience and an act of giving, take one of these boxes uh, to fill it out, fill it up, and uh, bring it back so that we can give it to, to a child who really deserves this. Um, we were talking about this earlier, and you might even say something about this later. Um, but when you look around the world and you look where we live, we really have nothing to complain about. Even though there's so many things that are going on and there's so much craziness that's happening around us, we still have it pretty good when you consider all the other people around the world and what they don't have. And we're going to complain because the internet, oh, it's not working, you know, or, uh, oh, the long line at Burger King, you know, I can't stay in line this long. This is too, too long to wait, you know. The conveniences that we have, uh, we're very, very blessed and very, very fortunate. So, um, so let's pray together. Um, as we pray, I want you guys to, to lift up these boxes that God would anoint them and he would use them in the lives of these kids. I want you to pray for our church as we come together today um, to study God's word, that he would open his word to us. And I want you to pray for us as a church as we come into the season, as we prepare for um, a, new, a new year, a new budget, uh, new, new leaders, all of that. In fact, today, uh, following this time, we're going to have a, a discussion about our budget. And if that's something you'd like to come and be a part of, we'd encourage you to come after the service in the dining room and come sit down and see what we're looking to do next year. Uh, you are more than welcome to do that. Even those of you online, you might not be able to come and be here physically, but if you have questions, you can call the church office and connect with one of us, and we'd be happy to answer any question you might have. So, uh, so let's pray together. And then again, in an act of just giving, in an act of just obedience to to God's faithfulness in our lives, I'd encourage you while we sing this song, come and get a box. Take two, but bring them back, okay? Bring them back. So let's pray. So Father, we love you and we thank you so much, God, for this opportunity. Thank you for all the things that you're doing around us and in our lives, Lord. We know that right now things look crazy. In our world, we look, at, you know, we look within our own country and all the craziness right now of, of even the election and this virus and all of these things that are happening, God. But when you sit down and you really begin to peel everything back, God, we are so blessed and so fortunate to live and have what we have. And so, God, I pray that you continue to protect us, continue to wake us up as a nation. God, I pray that you continue to, uh, to have us rest in you, God. And remember that uh, nothing we can do uh, can make the difference. Only you can. And so I pray that we would. We would slow down and we would think upon you and, and uh, involve you in every, every aspect of who we are. So we pray over these boxes, God, and this opportunity now to give these um, boxes to these kids and to fill them with love and fill them with hope uh, and to fill them with you, God. Thank you for what you're going to do through them. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Bye. Uh -huh. 
inmost melody and every Amen? Because we have so much to rejoice about, so much to be thankful for. And not just in this country, but all across the world because Christ is our King. God loves us with a love that we can't even begin to understand or imagine, yet He does. He loves us. And regardless of what's going on, as as Pastor Pedro said just a few moments ago, regardless of what's going on politically, or, or health-wise with the pandemic, we know who's still in charge, amen? So let's bow before him and ask him to bless our time together. Father, we bow humbly into your presence to say, Christ, you be magnified in everything that we say and in everything that we do, that God, we would lift you high with our entire life. So, Father, thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. Thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy in this country to worship you without fear. And God, we pray that you would be pleased from what you see and hear from us. So today be magnified in each of our lives. And we pray it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. It's Sunday. I'm fired up. Are y'all excited? I don't know. know. Y'all didn't have as much coffee as I had. Um, listen, I am excited for, I'm, I'm excited for Thanksgiving, right? Because I like to eat. Y'all know this about me. And it's, but see, isn't that part of the problem that we run into in our country is all of a sudden Thanksgiving has now become uh, about turkey and uh, Pepperidge Farm stuffing 
right? Or wh whichever stuffing you like. Are you an old school uh, stuffing person where you like it to be the old school like um, cornmeal stuffing or do you like the Pepperidge Farm or which way you... So isn't it funny how we always get things kind of turned around? Um, listen, that song has me fired up, Pedro. I totally lost all idea of where I was supposed to go in the beginning of this message. But that's what it's all about is to get lost in our love for God. Amen? And to just be able to raise our hands. I know that's a little Baptocostal of me. But did you know it's okay to raise your hands and worship him? Amen? That's a good feeling. Now, only if it's the Lord moving you to raise your hands. If you're, if you're raising your hands because you saw somebody else do it, that was for the wrong reason. But if you're raising your hands and lifting his, your voice to him because of how awesome he is, that's what it's about. And that's kind of what we studied all through Jonah. So just a quick recap of where we were um, the past few weeks as we studied through the book of Jonah. Um, it, it really, the wrap up last week is about this. And this is what we take away from the book of Jonah. We have a big God... And he's given us a big, big purpose. And really that's in, in three ways. Um, first off, the, the two main themes of Jonah is that God is 100% sovereign, cannot be moved off of his throne at all. Amen? Amen? He is sovereign, completely sovereign. The second thing is, is that he is merciful and compassionate to a lost world. Thank God for that. Amen? Because if he was not merciful and if he was not compassionate, you and I are out of luck. We're out of hope. We're out of help. But because he is, we have all the hope we need. We have all the help we'll ever want because the God of the universe loves us. And then finally, we have a huge role to fulfill in taking that message of salvation, that message of good news to a world that desperately needs it. And we have so much to be thankful for. As Pastor Pedro said, um, listen, we have a thing right here in the United States called first world problems, right? It's, it's kind of what Pastor Pedro said. It's like, oh man, the line is too long at Chick-fil-A. Um, or, or how about this? This is a huge first world problem. And of course, it's a little weird now because of the coronavirus. Um, but have you ever like been standing in line at Disney and been like, I am not waiting for this ride. This is too long. Right? Um, let me tell you something. As I was watching that video and thinking about these boxes, um, this is important. Um, and here's why. Because um, I've seen some of those faces personally. Um, the pastor in front of that school, I've actually met that pastor. And, and so we're actually having a tangible impact on hearts and lives for the sake of the gospel. And here's the deal. We get upset waiting in a line at Disney. They've never heard of Disney. And these boxes are important because as we have the privilege of walking through those villages, we're meeting a, a physical need for the sole purpose of sharing a spiritual truth that there is a sovereign, merciful God that loves them. It's about the gospel of Jesus. That's what it's all about. And we have so much to be grateful for. We have so much to be thankful for and so much, so much more. I wanted to share this with you um, as a, just a, a giving thanks and a giving praise. Um, we have a sewing ministry here called So Much More. And I was told um, this past week that they have reached sewing 1,865 masks that have been distributed all across our community and in this church. Is that not incredible? <laughs> what? That's almost 2,000 masks. That's crazy. But I want to share a few more things with you. And as Pastor Pedro said, um, we, we have uh, this afternoon, uh, for two weeks now, we've had in the foyers our 2021 uh, suggested uh, recommended uh, budget. And really, here's what that budget is. That budget is a plan. Um, Y'all know me. I am a debt cancellation pastor, not a debt reduction pastor. And we will always, you have this commitment from me, from our finance team, and from our staff. We will always live within our means, no matter what. It doesn't matter which way that ball moves. We are going to follow what God blesses us with and leverage that for the gospel of Jesus every single time. Um, but this afternoon, we're going to be um, having that meeting. If you've got questions about that or want to sit in and ask some questions, please do that right after this service in the dining hall. We're going to be doing that. But I want to share a couple of things for, with you. And if you've got your worship guide, you can turn it over on the back. And we kind of keep you up to date with where things are at 
um, with our budget and with our finances and things like that. So you see our 2020 annual budget there um, and uh, what was given last week. But I want to tell you this. This is just in the midst of uh, a global pandemic, in the midst of um, months of shutdown, and, and then as and, and look, you look around, we're still not back to where things were, um, but I want you to know, here's what God has been doing. Um, in the midst of all of that, God has provided for his church, including LifePoint Church, in a massive way. And because of your faithfulness to give, um, you have made a huge impact. And so year to date, not only have we stayed on budget, but we have reduced the principle of our loan an additional $110,000 in the midst of a pandemic. That's incredible. The total number for this year in redu reducing our um, principal, the total reduction of principal is $259,817. Church, here's the deal. I am dead serious about canceling our debt. Why? Because the moment we're done with that debt, we can go out to that world and leverage more of what God has entrusted us with for the gospel of Jesus in a powerful way. Amen? So listen, this is the time where I start to get exciting, excited because here's the thing. We are closing in on the million dollar mark. That means we have almost paid off $900,000 of debt in the past three and a half, four years. That's incredible. And here's what I know. Once we hit that million dollar mark, I believe the Lord is gonna blow our socks off. And if we will just be obedient to him and follow him, we're gonna see him do what only he can do. And that's what, that, that's what we're about here. So your giving matters. Thank you for being faithful to give. Thank you for loving the Lord in that way. And so we come to this season of Thanksgiving and we truly have so much to be thankful for. Um, but here's a question I've got. Why do we celebrate Thanksgiving? I kind of got ahead of myself earlier talking about turkey and stuffing. Y'all know where my mind is, right? I'm, I'm ready for lunch. Um, but uh, so we, we think about Thanksgiving, and for me, that's typically what I think about. Um, are we smoking a turkey or are we frying it? And you know what my answer is, let's do both, right? That would be fantastic. Um, but, but so a lot of times our hearts and our minds start to head that direction. But why do we actually celebrate Thanksgiving? Because uh, typically, a lot of times on our tables, the only, um, the only representation we get from the pilgrims is the salt and pepper shakers. Y'all got them? Right? Matter of fact, my mom, about a week and a half ago, was like, I don't even have those out yet. I need to put those out. So, I mean, that's what we think about. But so, a lot of times, we think of the pilgrims, and here's what we think of. Man, these were religious geeks. Right? These were these little uh, meek and mild religious guys with funny hats and buckles on their shoes and goofy looking guns, right? The shotgun, Pedro. They had those ones that like bell out on the end. What, why would you do that? A lot of times that's what we think of the pilgrims. What, what, what exactly were the pilgrims? Um, I, there's, there's an amazing movie called Monumental that Kirk Cameron put out. And um, he goes through a lot of this. I watched it again um, about a about three weeks ago. And I wanted to share some of these things with you. Um, we celebrate Thanksgiving in our country because God provided and sustained for the pilgrims a place where they could worship him freely without fear and without regulation from a um, oppressive government. So God brought them to a new land. Um, but a lot of times we don't really think through exactly everything that those pilgrims went through and who they were. Um, in our culture right now, in, in, in our culture in America, it's easy to overlook these things because we live in a time and a culture of prosperity where we don't need to be grateful to God for anything because we have everything. We find ourselves in this place because since we all have what we need, we have no need of God. And, and when you consider that, and then you go back and think of what the pilgrims went through, here, here's kind of, I just want to give you a, a little brief background of that, just as a reminder for all of us. Um, the pilgrims were a part of the Puritan group that then became separatists. And what the Puritans were, was they were the people that were saying, you know what, um, this is what we want. We, we want our churches to be guided by this book 
and not by the oppressive nature of previous religions. Specifically, um, they had come out of the Catholic Church and were now, um, through the Reformation, were, were becoming this new church called the Church of England. And what had happened was the, the Church of England was now being controlled by the monarchy. And the monarchy was using the power and leverage of the church to keep the people under control. You know, when, when the king is able to say, well, God said so, and I'm God's man, therefore you do as I say, that's a little bit more powerful than just I'm the king who wants you to do what I say. If you can leverage God in a way to get people to do what you want them to do, that's a big deal. And the Puritans were like, no way. We're not going to be a part of this. We believe in the one true God, and we believe in his word should be the ultimate guide for our lives. Amen? Some of them to the point where they said, we are going to separate from the Church of England, which is where we get separatist. And they said, we're not having this. And the journey that they went through from England, uh, a place called Scrooby, England, over to Holland, back to England, and then on the Mayflower to come to these United States is absolutely crazy what they went through. These were not wimpy religious folk. They laid the foundation for what we enjoy today without any reverence for what it took to get what we've gotten. That's why we can blow through Memorial Day and we can blow through Veterans Day and not think twice about it. What do we need? Nothing. We forget that it was bought and purchased by the lives, sweat, blood, and tears of those who have gone before us to secure the freedoms we have. That's why we should give thanks. In a time in our country, in this world, where there is so much anger and division, wouldn't it be nice to have something to be thankful for that could actually unite us, draw us together, and give us a purpose to move forward with that we could say, hey, this will last for eternity. This isn't just something we can do as a nation. This is something God is going to do in our midst, and nothing will be able to take it away. Wouldn't that be awesome? Well, guess what? Israel had the same thing. Israel had the same things that they could be thankful for. So I want you to open your Bibles to uh, Psalm 100. So um, those of you that aren't familiar, just kind of go towards the middle, open her up, and it should be close to Psalms or Proverbs. We're going to be in the um, 100th, 100th chapter, easy for me to say. Um, and we're just going to take all five verses. We're going to take them, take them apart a little bit and see why and how we should be uh, thankful because of what God has given us for. And I want you to think about this as you're turning there and before we stand, as we look at Psalm 100, and there's multiple other Psalms that we could have looked at this morning. Um, these, these words, this text is not just so that we can have something praiseworthy to talk about. It's also instructional in why and how we should give thanks. So in uh, the honor of reading God's word, let's all stand together as we read Psalm 100 um, verses one through five. Be thankful, a psalm of thanksgiving. Let the whole earth shout triumphantly to the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his, his people, the sheep of his pasture. And enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and give thanks to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. And his faithful love endures forever, his faithfulness through all generations. Let's pray. God, thank you for who you are. And God, as we enter into your presence right now, God, we want to lift a shout of praise to you. And just say, you are God, and we love you. So God, move me out of the way, fill me with your spirit, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, God, would be pleasing into your presence alone, but may it be practical and beneficial for your church to live in response to your goodness and your faithfulness. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Y'all may have a seat. So the first point we wanna get to today is right out of the gate here in Psalm 100, verse one. Let the whole earth shout. So point number one today is shout, right? Amen. Yeah, there you go. I got a little bit of a shout. Um, so here's the deal. Shout. Let the whole earth shout triumphantly to the Lord. 
Serve the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. So here's the deal. Um, This psalm is saying that the entire earth has reason to shout triumphantly to the Lord. And, And that's not, you know, singling out just the saved people or just the lost people. It's saying, no, actually, the whole earth has reason to shout triumphantly. Why? We have life. Whether you're saved or whether you're lost, it doesn't matter. We are exchanging oxygen at the moment and able to go eat turkey, right? There's a lot to be excited about. It's one of those common graces that all of us get to enjoy is the gift of life. But then it says this, not only should the whole earth shout triumphantly, but then it says, serve the Lord with gladness. Uh Uh-oh, right? Wait a second, we're just supposed to come and sit, JP. No, no, actually, the Psalms here is telling us not only should we shout triumphantly, but we should actually serve with happiness in our hearts. We should serve with gladness. You know, you're never more like Christ than when you're serving. That's going to come back in just a few minutes because all of this is pointing to Jesus, just like we saw in Jonah. You're never more like Christ than when you're serving. So when you shout triumphantly to the Lord, the next natural thing is to serve him with who we are. So you can't, and I want you to be very aware of this. You can't separate these two things. You can't separate the idea of having victory in Jesus and the response of serving gladly. If you have victory in Jesus, the natural thing to follow is serving gladly. So don't separate those two. You can't. When we shout for victory, this must be followed with humble and obedient service. Why? Because praise and service is central to God, not to you and me. We shout triumphantly to who? To the Lord. Why do we serve gladly? Because we have a God that's worthy to be shouted about. It's central to the gospel. So who's your one? Right, we talk about that. That's kind of been a theme for this year. We've still got the uh, box with the ping pong balls. As a matter of fact, I need to move a white ping pong ball to an orange ping pong ball. I'll be doing that later. So during response time, you do the same. Who are you praying for? That you would share the gospel with someone. See, as we shout triumphantly to the Lord, then we serve with a happy heart, with gladness about the gospel. It's all centered around that. Is that part of who you are? Is that part of your purpose? to share the gospel. So shout the victory is point number one today. Point number two is acknowledge God. Verse three, acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his, his people, the sheep of his pasture. All right, so uh, Yahweh and Elohim are the two words. Sound familiar? For about the past five weeks, we've had it on the, on the screen through Jonah. And let's look at them again real quickly. Um, the first one is uh, Lord. The Lord, he is God. Lord is Jehovah or yud heh the four Hebrew consonants. And it's um, the existing one, the covenant name of the one true God of Israel. And then Elohim or God. And this isn't just gods in the ordinary sense, but more specifically here, the tense that's being used is that he is the supreme God. So once again, uh, you know, pointing back all through Jonah, we have this same thought that not only is he the covenant-keeping God, the covenant-making God, but he's also the supreme God of everything, and he's sovereign. And as we think of these things, we, we, your mind has to go straight back to Jonah. And what was Jonah walking through? We'll come back to that later. So what is this saying? This um, covenant-keeping God, the supreme God, he then goes on to say, he is the creator. He made us. He made us and we are his and his people. So there again, this sovereign, supreme God is the creator of all things. And then it goes on to say this, and I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, we are the sheep of his pasture. Not only do we belong to him because he made it, but we live in his world. And not only are we people, but he refers to us as sheep. Sheep are not exactly the most intelligent creatures out there, right? Y'all aware of that? This isn't like one of those, wow, you guys are amazing sheep, right? 
Sheep are not, you know, you don't watch wildlife shows on TV where they're like, wow, did you see that sheep take down that huge animal? No, no, sheep, they're, they're, they're not known. Um, this is not an awesome reference. They're not known to be intelligent. They're not known to be fierce. Um, I was in the Marine Corps. You don't see any patches, whether it be uh, Marine, Army, Air Force, or Navy of like, man, we're the, we're the sheep squadron, <laughs> you know? Fear me and my wool. <laughs> Somebody went bah on the front row. That's hilarious. Yeah, that's not exactly, it doesn't instill fear in your heart, right? When you hear a sheep, you're not like, wow. Except that he is the good shepherd. Listen to me carefully. Why would sheep be any type of a good reference? It's because we have an awesome shepherd. Not only does the good shepherd provide for his sheep, but he protects them. And then he says, get this, my sheep know my voice. And when you walk through Psalm 23, that is not a funeral dirge. That is a, that is a battle cry. That we have a good shepherd and we are his. And regardless of where we find ourselves, whatever circumstance or situation, he is there. He protects us and he saves us and he keeps us provided with everything we need. We've got a good shepherd Oh, man, that's enough to shout about, right? So we should shout triumphantly, shout the victory. We should acknowledge that he is God. And here's the deal. If, if he is God, the supreme God, the only one true covenant-keeping God, who else is? You? Me? No. By the way, that's a very freeing doctrine. Not only the fact that we have the doctrine that he's completely sovereign, 100% unmovable off of his throne, uh, not only is he compassionate and merciful, but he is God and you're not. That is a freeing doctrine. It's not up to you. He made us, we are his, his people, sheep of his pasture. Here's another thing I want to throw at you. Here's a freebie for the day. His world, his rules. Right? It's not Burger King. JP doesn't get to have it JP's way. His world, his rules. It's point number three today, give thanks to God. Verse four and five, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts. You, under, you see the reference here? It keeps saying this word, his, his Gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Verse five, for the Lord is good and his faithful love endures forever. His faithfulness through all generations. What is this talking about? This is talking about why you and I should have an attitude of gratitude and not one of entitlement. Because it's all about his name, his kingdom, his faithfulness, his love, his, his, his. Why? It's not about you and me, church. It's not up to us. It's up to him. Praise his name that he didn't leave it up to JP. I would botch it. That's why I tell y'all all of the time, don't put your faith and trust in me. I'm just JP, but I have an awesome God. And if we'll fix our eyes on him, guess what? Then we'll get not only what we need, but we'll get what God can get for us and not just what we can do on our own. Give thanks to who? Him. Bless whose name? His. And why? Because he is good, not us. Here's the deal. So um, when, when you consider um, the, the situation that our world is in and then you consider the situation our country is in, and as I said at the, at the top of this message, um, we are more divided than we have ever been. And, and why? Because we're, we're focusing on uh, the exterior of all of us rather than um, the interior of us as believers. And here's the thing. We as the church have the answer. We as the church have the answer. Why? Because it's not our world and it's not our rules. So when we fix our eyes on what God originally intended, we actually get what he wants for us to have. 
And when we consider the cross of Jesus Christ, that God would say, I'm gonna demonstrate my love for you in this way, when you didn't deserve it in any way, shape, or form. Why? Because your name's not worthy to be praised. Your gates are not worthy to be entered in with thanksgiving. You didn't deserve my love, but I'm gonna demonstrate my love in this way. When you don't deserve it, I'm gonna take all of your sin, all of your shame to the cross. And then I'm gonna give you something. And it has nothing to do with what language you speak, what community you grew up in, or what the color of your skin looks like. I'm gonna give you new life because of my shed blood. And it's gonna be the one thing that unifies everybody together that can't be torn down can't be torn down. It's not about your situation. It's not about your circumstances. It's about your salvation. And church, until we can get past this thing, whatever it is that we have in us that says, I can't see past my own nose, to realize it's not about what you look like. It's about the salvation that is in you. Then we have something that will go beyond all of this division, all of this anger, all of this hate. Amen? And listen, here's the deal. It's not up to whoever your them is. It's not up to the Republicans. It's not up to the Democrats. It's not up to um, this racial uh, diverse group or this other racial diverse group. It's up to me. It's up to you. It's up to us collectively to say, God, you have your way in my heart and I will live my life according to your plan and then we'll see what you get us. How are we gonna heal this nation? I had the awesome opportunity to meet with um, uh, a couple and and they said, how are we gonna heal 250 years of division, of hurt, of pain? I said, "I, I don't know. I read the back of the book and it sounds like everything out there burns up eventually. Right? So how are we going to fix this? I said, right here. You and me. I don't care what color you are. I just love you. Because of salvation in Jesus. You don't have to get it right. Because Jesus did. Thank God I don't have to get it right. Because Jesus did. And what binds us in unity because of Christ. So much greater than whatever could divide us. We've lost our way because we've, we've got an attitude of entitlement, not gratitude, for what we've got in Christ. There's nothing good about us except our God. And when we focus on him, we get what we're supposed to have. So um, I'm going to hit this one. First Thessalonians 5. Jay, I think it's in there. Um, why should we rejoice? Why should we praise, shout the victory? 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always. So we go from Old Testament, the Psalms, to New. The New Testament. Rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is what God would have for us. Not to be like, hey, you. Hey, no. I'm I'm mad at this. But to be Praise, filled with praise, filled with thanks. To pray constantly. To pray, that's, that's that serving piece. We should be praying for the world around us. Why? Because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Why did Christ come? Christ said, I didn't come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Salvation belongs to the Lord. You remember out of Jonah? Let's go back to Jonah real quick. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Where did that come? That came in the midst of Jonah being in the belly of the great fish. And he was helpless and he was hopeless and he'd come to the end of himself as he uh, passed through the gates and the foundations of the earth, never to come back again. He said, my only help, my only hope can come from God. Salvation belongs to the the Lord. And that word for salvation belongs to the the Lord is Yeshua, Jesus. What is God's will for you in Christ Jesus? Salvation. And then through that salvation, he's given us a ministry of reconciliation, not one of condemnation. And what are we supposed to reconcile the world to? Christ. This is critical. Don't miss it. Do you see how gratefulness and peace comes from an understanding that it all comes from God, who is sovereign and compassionate? 
And, and if, if he is sovereign and if he is compassionate and we're supposed to be like him, um, shouldn't we have compassion and not condemnation for the world around us? And actually, if you look back at the uh, story of Jonah, isn't this the exact message we have there? The same message we have in the psalm, the same message we have in 1 Thessalonians. You could go to Colossians. You could go to Ephesians. You can go all through the scripture, and it's all the same. He is sovereign, and he's compassionate, and he loves you. The message in Jonah is there's nowhere that you can go that you are too far gone to escape the love and mercy and compassion of this sovereign God. So I want you to understand, I want, if you don't get anything else today, I want you to take this away with you right now. God loves you. How do we know? The entire Bible points to it. From the Mosaic law to the fulfillment of the law in Jesus, from Jonah to Nahum, to Psalms, to 1 Peter. This is not a collection of stories. Church, did you know that? This book, this is not a collection of stories. It's one story. From Genesis to the maps, it's one story. And here's the story. God loves you right where you are. He loves you right where you are. He wants better things for you, but that's why he says, uh, I'm the good shepherd and I lead you in paths of righteousness for my name's sake. Psalm 23, right? Why does he need to lead us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake? Because we're sheep and we don't know the way. But we have a good shepherd that we can follow wholeheartedly. And we can know that when we get to the destination that he's leading us to, nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, Romans. Do you see how it all points together? to the one true God that loves you radically. It's not a collection of stories. It's just one story leading us into his presence, his panim. So today, what are we to do? First off, we shout the victory because salvation belongs to the Lord and that's Jesus. And secondly, we turn our Lives completely over to him. Why? Because it's his world, his rules. I told you we'd come back to this one. So as we wrap up this morning, here's what I want you to notice. If it's his world and his rules, um, we don't come to him on our own terms. We can only come to God on his terms. He's the one that spoke it all into existence. He's the one that sustains it all. And we have great reason to give thanks especially in this country. Why? Because it doesn't matter what race, color, or creed you are, we can worship the one true God without fear and freedom. And we should be doing that together as a community because he loves us that much. So heads bowed, eyes closed all across this room. And I'm not saying that, I'm not having you do that because it's the Baptist thing to do or it's the religious thing to do. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes to remove all the distractions from around you. Because if there's one thing that's more important than anything else right now is that if this truly is his, rule, his world and his rules, then we need to come to God on his terms alone. And here are his terms. I'm just gonna lay them out there as plainly as I know how. Um, he gave us his holy law and we broke it. And you and I don't have the capacity or the ability to fulfill the terms of his law so we're in deep weeds. Sheep lost in deep weeds. And he knew that we couldn't help ourselves and that we were hopeless. So as I shared just a few moments ago, God said, I demonstrated my love for you in this way that even when you didn't deserve it, I sent Jesus to take your place on the cross. And what was that cross all about? That cross was the penalty for breaking his holy law. I know a lot of times we don't share it this way. We share it a little bit more seeker sensitively. But that cross was to satisfy the burden of the law. And it was really meant for you and me. But God saw that we had no way to fulfill that law on our own. So he sent Jesus, his son, 
Yeshua, salvation belongs to the Lord, to satisfy that law on your and my behalf because he knew we couldn't. And Jesus shed his precious blood for us on that cross to pay for those sins. It's called atonement. He covered all of our sin, all of our shame with his blood. He died on that cross and he was buried to satisfy the holy law that he himself had spoken into our world. And then God raised him from the dead on the third day to prove that Jesus is who he says he is and that he's accomplished for us what he's promised to accomplish. And that's salvation belongs to the Lord. Salvation belongs to Jesus. We have to come to Jesus for salvation. So in the quietness of this moment, have you trusted Jesus alone as your only hope, your only help? for forgiveness and salvation. Today is the day of salvation. And I can't think of a greater reason to shout the victory is that we have victory in Jesus. Amen. So if you're a Christian in this room, you're a believer, if you're a believer watching, I'm gonna ask you to be praying for those that are listening. That the Holy Spirit would have freedom in this place to move on our hearts and that we would never be the same because of who he is and what he's done for us. So as believers are praying, if you're here this morning, you need to trust Christ as your personal Savior. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. Now listen to me carefully. It's not about the words that I'm about to say. It's not about the order they're in. It's about your heart and the attitude of your spirit before a holy God. And if you mean this prayer from the bottom of your heart, if this is a cry of your spirit, say, God, I just need you. The Bible says you can know that you're saved. So if that's you as believers are praying, you pray this prayer right where you are as I pray it from up front. And the prayer goes like this. Dear God, I know I've messed up. I've done things I shouldn't do and I haven't done some things I should do. And that means I've broken your holy law and I am helpless and hopeless to satisfy it. But God, I believe um, with all of my heart that you sent Jesus to be my Lord and I confess him as Lord with my mouth right now. And I believe in my heart that um, he shed his blood, he died on the cross to pay for my sins. But I also believe that you raised him from the grave on the third day, that he is exactly who he says he is and he's done for me what he's promised to do. And that's to secure salvation for me because salvation only belongs to Jesus, my Lord. God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. And now, God, I shout the victory that I have in Jesus. Head still bowed, eyes still closed. If you prayed that prayer for the first time this morning, I mean, I can't think of a better time than to give thanks to God than Thanksgiving week to say, I'm gonna surrender my whole heart, my whole life to Jesus. And in just a moment, we're gonna have a time of response and I'm gonna ask you to do something maybe a little scary, maybe a little bold. But you know what? We're Americans. We're not afraid to be bold. I'm gonna ask you today, in just a moment, we stand and sing together. If you prayed that prayer, I'm gonna ask you to step out, walk down to the front and say, hey, you know what? I prayed that prayer, what's next? Pastor Dan will be down here, I'll be down here and we'd love the opportunity to rejoice with you, to give thanks. And then we have some people that wanna talk with you about what's next in your journey with Jesus. But you know what? Maybe you're here in the room or watching online and you've, you've trusted Jesus as Savior, but it's time for baptism. You've got questions about that. Or maybe it's time for saying, hey, this is the church that I want to be a part of. This is, I, want to, I want to be a part of this family of faith. Or maybe you just want to come pray. Pray for um, our country. Pray for our community. That we would tear down all that's dividing us and just get to the heart of the matter that there's a God that loves us. And we should be seeking His redemption his restoration and his reconciliation. So let's all stand all across this room and even at home, I'd invite you to stand with us as well. I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna worship and I'm gonna ask you to move however God is leading you. Don't stay still. We haven't been called to come and sit. He's called us to get up and stand for his gospel and to serve our communities. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your love, grace, and mercy. Thank you for the Psalms that we can know why we give thanks, why we are to shout the victory because the victory is in you and not in us. Therefore, we can trust it. 
So God, I pray right now that there would be freedom in this place to respond to your leading in our lives, whether it's for salvation, baptism, church membership, or maybe just to come pray at the altar. God, I pray that you would be glorified by what you see and hear from us in these next few moments. So Father, we love you. We truly lift our voices in praise to you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we continue to worship, we'll be waiting down front for you. of mercy that part with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving God you're so good God you're so So 
Amen. 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 Thank you all again for being here with us this morning. A couple of reminders as you get ready to go, and I want to speak to those of you that are at home. I want you to be aware that next Sunday as we come together, we're going to have communion. And so we invite you and we encourage you to prepare for that at home so that you can have that experience as well with us. For those of us in the room, we'll have communion, and uh, it's done in a safe way, and we've done it before, and it works really well. But we want you to know that that's coming up. As we dismiss in just a second, reminder that we've got this meeting if you'd like to come and be a part of that discussion time. But thanks again for being with us. Be blessed and uh, go well and have a great week celebrating with your families. You're dismissed.